Have you ever had that moment where you unbox your brand new Nintendo Switch only to realize the right Joy-Con was missing? Yeah, I hate it when that happens. I had a fresh copy of Mario Wonder waiting to be played, so I expressed my frustration to customer service. They said that they would send me a replacement Joy-Con. A replacement. For a controller I never had to begin with. It would take a week to get here, but they said if I could beat Mario Wonder before the Joy-Con arrives, I would get free shipping. That sounded a little counterintuitive to me, but I accepted their challenge. Mario Wonder, but with only the left Joy-Con. You could technically just flip it horizontally and play like that, but obviously I'm not doing that. I'm playing with one vertical Joy-Con, and I have to beat the game with these limited options of buttons. We're starting off in 1-1. It's impossible. You literally can't get over this pipe. I'ma be honest, I thought the left shoulder button let you do a twirl jump, but apparently that's the right shoulder button, which is slightly inconvenient for my current circumstances. It looks like I'm gonna have to strategize. My plan... This is not possible, I gave up. But then I thought of something. Can you beat Mario Wonder with only the left Joy-Con? No. But can you beat a completed Mario Wonder file with every badge unlocked with only the left Joy-Con? Now we're talking. And yes, this is what I was originally gonna do. I equipped the auto bounce badge, breezed through like three levels, and then got stuck because this pipe was too tall. So then I started toying around with other badges, which is where I realized that some of them could be activated by shaking a Joy-Con. I tested this by using the Spider-Man badge, and that's when I discovered the sole reason this video even exists. Not only does the badge activate, but it also makes Mario perform a twirl jump. I didn't know that. In fact, looking back, I was kind of insane for even trying this without knowing I could jump. But now that I could, look at this. World 1, boom. World 2, boom. I was flying through these levels. I will say though, this challenge has been an insane wrist workout so far. But don't think it's gonna be a cakewalk from here, because there's still a few problematic levels. This mandatory wiggler race, for instance. Sure, I can jump now, but I still can't run, meaning I had to walk. Luckily, this wiggler doesn't understand the concept of a race, but I have a feeling it won't be that easy every time. Water levels would normally be a problem too, but luckily the dolphin kick badge is also also activated by shaking the controller, so these levels are soluble. <laughs> Check this out. I was struggling in this level, though it wasn't a left Joy-Con problem, it was a skill issue. But towards the end right here, I just started pressing random buttons out of panic and somehow made it through this flock of condarts. And oh look, another mandatory wiggler race. Luckily, this one took place mostly underwater, so it was much easier to get ahead. I will admit though, I nearly got humbled by the wiggler at the end there. You're right, Joy-Con has shipped and will arrive later today, the heck? Okay, uh... World 3. Sorry if this video's been all over the place so far, but now I'll slow down. The Shining Falls started off great. I was zooming through levels, getting bested by jumping Luigi hats, and... Okay, so now we have a mandatory level on a badge that requires you to jump using the B button. Do you see the issue here? I'm gonna have to figure out a way to beat this level without using the badge it's designed for. The first thing the game wants me to do is jump over these comically tall enemies. Obviously the spin jump doesn't reach that high, so my plan was to go into the level with a power up, that way I could take a hit and go through the trompette. Alright, new plan. I noticed there were slopes right here, which got me thinking. Remember back in World 2 where I knocked out an enemy by sliding upwards on a slope? What if I could do the same thing right here? I positioned myself and ground pattern just as the enemy came in front of me, which actually took it out. There was another one after that, so I just did the same thing. But then I came across this pink one, which didn't have a slope nearby. It took me a ridiculously long time to realize that... I didn't actually need a slope, I could just ground pound next to it and that would do the job. By now I was thinking, wow, I've had some pretty good problem solving skills so far, I might actually beat the lev- Let's not overcomplicate things, this is simply not possible. I can't use any power up, I can't use a different badge, there's nothing I can do. Or is there? This might be a bit of a stretch, but I summoned Yoshi as a second player, specifically with a left Joy-Con. This allowed me to gain some height with Yoshi's jump, then backflip off him to clear the ledge. I don't know if using a second player counts as cheating, but there was literally nothing else I could do. Wow, what a difficult level. I'm sure this world won't have any more- Zip, track, dash. This level was a problem in my last Mario Wonder video, and it's a problem in this one. I had a bit of trouble getting the Wonder Flower, but once I did, it looked like there wasn't gonna be any required jumps. Except that there was. But that's fine, I just let myself free fall, lose the Wonder Flower, and beat the level, simple as that. Master Poplin, looks like you didn't manage- Stupid Poplin. How is this guy the master? He has the royal seed, and he's not giving it to me because I don't have a right Joy-Con. Only those who find the true endpoint shut up. So thanks to Dollar Store Toad here, I'm gonna have to break the rules and use the right Joy-Con to jump during the wonder effect. My replacement right Joy-Con was barely in California, so I had to use my imagination to perform these mandatory jumps. Okay, so that's one failure entering the sunbaked desert. You get an easy level. You get an easy level. You all get easy levels. What a world to do this challenge in. A few of the levels weren't possible though, which led to panic in regards to 
and not having enough wonder seeds to get into the castle, but I made it work. There we go, desert complete. That was easy. The airship level at first was just me being bad, but then I came across this part. I had to grab the pal blocks with the right Joy-Con and place them next to these crates. I don't have a right Joy-Con. I can't grab items, so that means I had to juggle the pal blocks on my head, all while the level was on auto scroll. And on top of that, one pal block wouldn't do the trick, I needed two. Oftentimes I would misjuggle the pal block or not keep up with the auto scroll, but eventually I got the bright idea of actually walking forward and getting a head start. And look at that, it worked. So now I just need to not die or else I would have to redo it. Let's just say this part was a tad bit stressful. I got through the level though. The next world was the Fungi Mines and... Minus one particular level, this world was pretty easy, except for the final level. You see, thanks to the jolly old poplins, you're required to get the wonder flower in the final level to proceed. The issue with that is that the wonder effect has you turn into a blob where you can't spin jump. This typically wouldn't be a problem if it weren't for the fact that the game spawns you on an island. I can't jump, so therefore I can't leave this area, this is impossible. Or is it? If I bring in a second player, there's a chance that I can use the ghost to respawn myself on the right side. I tried and tried, but it wasn't working. I went to the other side to see if it would work there, and it actually did. But when I did the same thing on the right side, it still didn't work. I eventually got so desperate that I brought in two extra players, and... Let's just say that got me nowhere. So once again, thanks to the poplin here, I had to jump regularly. I'm actually kind of glad my plan didn't work because there's absolutely no way I would have been able to do this part. It was around this time that I decided not to keep track of every time I had to press the B button. With my imaginary Joy-Con, of course. Oh, and look what's next, a poplin level. It was going well, but to get the Wonder Seed, you have to jump. Why? I hate you guys. Three failures entering world six. All guests are required to pull that handle. Why does that feel like a mockery? Hooray for the parachute cat badge. And looking back, I should have taken that as a massive sign because this world is where this challenge completely falls apart. Let me take you through this. It's so absurd, it's almost funny. Also, I didn't realize one of the levels was the subscribe button. That's kind of weird, actually. The first level I went to was where the Roombas, r r Roombas rule. The level was beatable, but getting the second wonder seed wasn't possible since you have to jump during the wonder effect. Next was Rarfs in the Ruins. This is the only level where you can legally get both wonder seeds. The grappling vine challenge was also possible. Possible. But after that was pull turn burn, a level designed around grabbing stuff, and the first like 90% of the level was going great, until the game forces you to grab and pull to expose this mandatory pipe. And then the airship level, would you look at that, more pulling. I'm able to get through the first two flames with invincibility frames, but of course this game's is extremely lame and that you cannot claim any power up aims, so I'm forced to give up. Shames. Floating high jump the second. One could also call it floating can't jump high enough. And oh yes, the search party level. The one that requires you to break these bricks to start the level. How do you do that you're asking? Well, obviously with the elephant power up, but mind you, you can't use the trunk without the right Joy-Con. This world was made to spite me, so I had to get very creative to deal with these levels. Here for instance, Spike Ball Mario magically started jumping on his own in the exact locations he needed to jump. What a coincidence. And he also started grabbing stuff on his own. How convenient. And apparently Elephant Mario now automatically grabs vases that have water in them and drops them precisely where the wonder flower is at. Wow, I guess I got really lucky that I didn't have to use the right Joy-Con, which is now in Texas by the way. I live in Texas. I have to hurry this up. The castle was surprisingly easy, so now, Bowser World. And guess what? Easy? Easy? Somewhat easy, and now the final level. The beginning has you run past three giant fire fists. Obviously I can't run, but if you just walk, you should be alright. The next issue was being stupid, and after that, so, add another 73 required B button presses to the ever growing list. Luckily, the game counts spin jumping as a time jump, so the boss fight was easy. And there you go. Ow, oh, I just hit my finger. So, can you beat Mario Wonder with only the left Joy Con? Yes! Except for in Zip Track Dash, Poison Ruins, Poplin Mansion that they probably stole, and pretty much the entirety of World 6. Thanks for watching. Oh! My right Joy Con. Looks like I'm eligible for free shipping.